Okay, this uh, section is just reviewing complex numbers and imaginary uh, stuff. So hopefully you remember that I is defined. Um, I is defined as the square root of negative 1. So that makes I squared equal to negative 1. And then we're able to do a lot of things with this, uh, this information. Okay, so this is just a funny little thing. It says you must be the square root of negative 1 because you can't be real. That's silly, right? Um, all right, so when you treat an I, you kind of treat it like an X um, in that you can't add things to, that aren't imaginary. So if I'm adding two complex numbers, I can add the real parts, 3 plus 2, which is 5, and I can Im add the imaginary parts. Um, and then I can't add them together. So 5 plus 9I is called a complex number because it has a real part and an imaginary part. When you multiply, you still kind of treat it like an X, except for it, you can simplify further. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 5i is 15i, 4i times 2 is 8i, and 4i times 5i is 20i squared. But remember, i squared is equal to negative 1, so that's really the same as just saying minus 20. Um, so when you put that together, 6 minus 20 is negative 14, and then you can add 15i and 8i, to get 23i. So remember, any i to a power, you can simplify, okay? So just a couple other things. Um, this is just some more fun. If I work this out, remember there's two of those there. That really means 3 minus 2i twice. So that would be 9 minus 6i minus 6i plus 4i squared. So then that would really be minus 4. So 9 minus 4 is 5 minus 12i. And then I could distribute this in there and get 5i minus 12i squared. Or that would really just become 5i plus 12. Again, just kind of manipulating that um, to practice simplifying it. We talked about this in Algebra 2. Um, I talked about the clock thing in Algebra 2 when we talk about uh, evaluating this. But think about that every power of i, you can simplify to i, i squared, i to the third, or i to the fourth. Because um, you, if you just count around, you can then always break it apart and simplify it to this. And so 51, if you think about um, how, many after, like, how many would be left over if I took 51 divided by 4, uh, what would be the remainder for that? So that would be what? Um, multiply by 2, that would be 8. That would be a remainder of 3. So if you take any power of i and you look at the remainder, wherever it ends up, at a remainder of 1, 2, 3, or 4, um, then that's what your answer is going to be to this. So this one, the answer is i to the third. But i to the third can be broken up as i squared times i, which would be negative 1 times i, which would be negative i. Is this a really big idea? It's not. It's just something I wanted to touch base on. Remember that i squared is negative 1. i is just i, but if you got i squared, you would get negative 1. i to the fourth is like i squared twice, so it's like negative 1 and negative 1, so that's positive 1. So every power of i can be simplified to i, negative i, negative 1, or positive 1. And we'll kind of look at a few of those and, and see what you think about it. Um, another big thing with imaginary numbers is just like with square roots, we can talk about the conjugate. If you take a conjugate, 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i, you get a real number out of that because you would get minus 6i plus 6i minus 9i squared, so this cancels out, and you get 4 plus 9, because i squared is negative 1, and you get a real number. So you take two imaginary answers, two complex numbers, and you multiply them together. That's called a conjugate, a complex conjugate. So... Um, it says, if a plus bi is a complex number, then its conjugate is a minus bi. 
And every time, if you multiply them together, you're going to get a squared plus b squared out of it because it's minus bi squared. Here, look, I'll show you. You'd get minus bi squared, but i squared is negative 1, so you get a squared plus b squared. Um, so when we have i's in our denominator, just like we don't want a square root in our denominator, we don't want imaginary numbers in our denominator. So I can get rid of that by multiplying by the conjugate. So on this one, 9 plus 2i, I don't want that in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. But I can't just multiply the bottom by the conjugate because it changes the value. But if I multiply the top, I'm really just multiplying by 1. So on the top, I now have 9 minus 2i. And on the bottom, again, if you know it's a conjugate, you don't have to work it all the way out. But if you get confused or you're not sure if you did it right, if you work it all the way out, you're going to see that the middle ones cancel out. And then you're going to get minus 4i squared, which is the same as plus 4i. So this cancels out. And 81 plus 4 is 85. And that's a fine answer. You can also break it back apart as the real part minus 2 over 85i, like the real part, the imaginary part. Perfect answer, perfect answer. Hopefully you have some vague memories of doing that. Same thing on this, you can multiply by the conjugate. So I can multiply by 3 plus 5i. So on this one, we have a little bit more work to do on the top. And just like with the square roots, it's okay to have an i in the numerator. We don't want it in the denominator. So on this one, I would get 21 plus 35i minus 3i minus 5i squared. And on the bottom, I'm going to not do the middle part this time. I know that's going to become um, plus 25 because it's minus 25i squared. This is going to become a plus 5 right here. So I'm going to get 26 on the top plus 32i, right, over 34. And I notice that's a big fraction. Everything's divisible by 2. So I'm going to make that 13 plus what, 16i over 17? And again, that's a fine answer, or you can write that as 13 over 17 plus 16 over 17i uh, and break it apart. you got to reduce your fractions, okay? Eight minutes. Okay. So uh, a couple other things. I just kind of see what I have left here. Um, this one is just kind of thinking about simplifying as you go. Like this will be the same as 5 minus the square root of negative 9 is 3i. Because you could break that up as square root of 9 and square root of negative 1. And this would be negative 1 plus 2i. Because square root of 4 and square root of negative 1. And now that's just like the other problems that we did um, last year in Algebra 1. We, we spent quite a few days discussing this stuff. But hopefully this is like old news to you at this point. Um, this would really become plus 6. So negative 5 plus 6 is 1 plus 13i. So that's something else they might give you. And then the other reason we're talking about this now is because when we do the quadratic formula, if we get an imaginary number, we can work that out, right? So I can say negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4, gosh, why do I keep doing that? I keep doing a squared. b squared would be 4 minus 4 times 5 times 1, all over 2 times 5 to a. So that would be 4 minus 20, which would be negative 16. Your calculator, unless you have one of those fancy calculators, is going to tell you that it can't take the square root of negative 16. But you can, because the square root of negative 16 is just the square root of 16, which is 4, and the square root of negative 1, which is i. And again, simplifying that, everything's divisible by 2. So negative 1 plus 2i over 5 is how I would write that. 
but that's the same as negative one-fifth plus or minus two-fifths i. Again, we did this last year. It's just reviewing it. And then the last thing I want to do is to talk about this, our favorite. This is the difference of two cubes. It's a perfect cube minus a perfect cube. So remember, perfect cube minus a perfect cube factors into a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So if I'm factoring this, that just factors into x minus 1. And then this squared would become x squared plus x times 1, which is just x, plus 1 squared, which is 1. If I'm factoring this, I leave it like this. But if I'm solving it, I'm going to get one answer here, x minus 1 equals 0. And then this part is not factorable. It's always going to be complex. So if I do the quadratic formula, I get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 1 times 1, all over 2 times 1. So 1 minus 4 is the square root of negative 3. And you can't do much with that, but we never leave a negative under our square root. So I can write that as i squared of 3 all over 2. So I get two imaginary, one real answer. Okay? So you're going to practice this uh, on your assignment. assignment.